Oh, hello, I'm back again, and today I'll be showing off the haul I got from my birthday. Technically, there's one missing. I built an airfix photo reconnaissance mosquito, but I can't find the box, so we're going to exclude that. There's also one which is technically a bonus because I did not get it from Hannett's lower stuff, but the rest I did. Um, I've kind of felt underwhelmed when I went there this time. I just feel like the price of models have gone uh, way too high now. They're about fifteen pound a model. Most uh, most companies being short run, so that's why they're probably so expensive. Um, so yeah, I only actually got four kits to build, one set of decals, and a vintage kit which I'm not going to build. But yeah, let's start off with the decals. This is uh, <clears throat> this is a set of training slash target tug versions of uh, some of the different planes. There's a Harvard, a, uh, two Ansons, a Spitfire, a, there's a Battle, and two Oxfords. I've just, I've just bought for the Anson. So if you remember my, um, my Peterborough model show haul, I bought this ever answered by special hobby the problem is it only comes with finish schemes in my box i think that's quite rare but oh my god the finish schemes are very boring and it, they have no historical significance so i would prefer to do it in one of these one of them is turretless the other one's sort of green and brown with um a couple squares of yellow uh, i'm not sure which one i'm gonna do yet but i'm quite excited i think i'll have to buy a spitfire uh, to do that unique version. Next up is the kit, which I only bought to sort of look at. I've been looking to buy a vintage kit just to sort of look at. I like looking at the vintage box art and looking at what they would have been like. And what's weird is I cannot find specifically this one on uh, Scalemates. So th the main differences with this one on Scalemates is... This one has a little information about um, giving it a Hungarian scheme if you want, if you have the spare decals, which most photos I find don't have that bit of information. And also, this box art is later on, but the the ones which usually have this box art do not have this bright blue plastic. So now, I don't know when this one was released, specifically... Um, probably 60s or 70s it comes with two sets of decals so two schemes someone's already cut off one of the sets of swastikas on this one but apart from that it's fully complete i have no intention of building it but i just would like to show you uh the detail yeah look at that so i built the modern fx m410 it was one of my favorite kits i built um this year and it was so fun uh, it was a lovely kit and this was only about £15, this was second hand. Uh, and it's not too bad. I I put back another kit I wanted, but I don't regret buying this one. This one's going to be just fun to look at. And you get two schemes in there, which is nice. Next up is the bonus kit, which is the N1 K2 George. I don't really know anything about the George, so this is what happened. I went to my grandparents for my birthday, sort of went up there for the weekend, and there's a model shop um, not too far away from them, and I decided to go in there, and I wanted to pick out a kit. I was mainly looking for the Tamiya Stingray in 172nd, but they didn't have any on shelves. I ended up picking up this one just because it's cheap and I had already gone to lower stuff so I didn't feel like I needed to get another kit but I really wanted to. I also have said for a while I like to build a kit where I don't really know anything about the plane or the kit so I really am not attached to it when I build it meaning that I can just sit back and relax and enjoy it. But I have sort of heard of the George now I have a really found out any information about it but I heard it was actually pretty good this is an old Hasegawa kit 
and it's all recessed panel lines, uh, but internally it's kind of bare bones. The other kit almost looked like a starter set. It had a little plaque and it was similar looking to the George with like a smaller tail. It was silver with red stripe. I can't remember what it was called. But I didn't pick that one up because it just looked really bare bones, that one. I've been building a lot of Japanese planes recently, so I'm especially excited for it now. But I think I might wait till I can get some Humbrol mouse skull so I can do this special chipping. Or get some chipping fluid. But I would love to do this one at some point soon. Now this one, it, I almost did not get this one. Uh, so I have a little story about it. This is the Breda 65A80 Nibio. So I absolutely love this Italian aircraft. I have always wanted one of these. Well, I've wanted one of these for about a year now. For a long time, AZ models had had this unreleased uh, since about 2010. And if you see them on eBay, they would sell for about £30. And then you got those annoying people on eBay selling them for about 100 And they are so rare, and everyone wants them, and they're so hard to come across. Uh, and that was until this year, I think, where they said they were going to re-release two boxes of it. One in Spanish markings, and one in Italian markings. Uh, and then when I went to Hannah's Lower Stoft, I saw that there weren't any in stock. So I was kind of sad because that was the one kit I was like, I want to get that. And they said they didn't have it. But whilst checking the AZ model shelf, there was a couple stacked up. So I picked one out and right at the end they basically almost didn't allow me to have it. Because they thought I'd taken it from the backup. Which means someone's pre-ordered it and things. But it turns out this one was going to go over to... Uh, Hannett's London and so it didn't really matter so they allowed me to have it so I almost did not get this one I got for about 16 or 17 pounds I've been really excited for it it's quite a small plane to be honest I'm going to do that one with the black cowling it's very similar to that one but I just like the black cowling this scheme's pretty bare bones this one but inside they've actually given us new engine parts and the plastic parts are really good, to be honest. This kit is much better than the old Azure one, which is the one which has the open gunner and the little window. And I was really worried about this one, because if you look, they show these windows, and you can see them there. But the kit does not come with any clear parts there, so I almost didn't want to pick it up. Worried it was going to be inaccurate, but I've not seen anyone mention them. But you do need to drill out those little four Bombay bits. They have the bombs vertical like the Germans did on the Heinkel 111. But I am so excited to build this one. I might build it next. But it won't be the only Spanish Civil War plane. So last year I got one of these. The AEW3 Gannet by Sword. And it messed it up. I messed it up so bad. The canopy, I fogged it up so much to the point where you could not see anything out of it. It was practically white. I don't even know how I did that. But after that, I basically screwed up the kit and I've not really used it. But I've been saying I want to get another one. And I almost did at the Peterborough model show. But I've been really looking forward to this. I'm wanting to do the yellow scheme. I just love the colour yellow. And I tried to cut out that last time, I screwed it up. But then I fixed it somehow with, like, plastic card, I think. This is a really nice kit. And I think Sword should be recognised more uh, for, for how good their kits are. They are very good, in fact. If you've never built a Sword kit, I would suggest you buy one, because they are amazing. They are an amazing little company. Uh... This kit comes with full resin interior for the uh, radar operator's positions. And it comes with all clear parts. And the gannet is massive, by the way. Uh, the gannet is no, no small plane, that's for sure. Here's the old one, which I just 
took a chunk off to see where I put the weight. Because I think I put the weight in the bulb as well. I just wanted to find out so I could replicate the same way I did it. Because last time I think it was quite difficult to find a place to put weight. I really like the uh, AEW3 Gannet. If not, I would urge to get the Trumpeter one or the Ravel kit. But this is the only AEW3 Gannet in 172nd, like, proper plastic kit. I think Saw's releasing a 148 scale one, which should compete with Airfix. But yeah, this kit is pretty exciting. So, after buying the Mosquito, I ended up doing research on another plane, the Hornet. And the Hornet was one of the fastest planes of World War II. And it just got into service right as the Pacific Theatre ended and the war ended as a whole. It's like a sleeker, one-seat Mosquito fighter. And it is lovely. Unfortunately, most kits of it are pretty bad. You have the old Frog Kit, which is vintage. And the Special Hobby one, which has been around for years, I would not get either. I heard it's way too short in dimensions of the fuselage. But this kit is the best one, I think. And I decided to get this one because I like all three schemes. You've got grey and PR blue, which I have the PR blue now. You have the PR blue and the green and grey camouflage. Or my favourite scheme, this giant yellow tail, all silver. But yellow and silver are probably the hardest colours to paint on. So that's why I decided to choose this one. Because if I don't like this one, I can do that one. Which I think would be my second choice. I want to do that one specifically. The parts on this kit though. They're actually very nice. Like they're on par with Airfix at some point. Uh, the panel lines aren't massive. Or over exaggerated. The only problem with this kit is. Some of the smaller details are ropey. Which I think you get a lot with. Uh, these short run companies. Especially AZ and KP. If you're going to get one of these. Which. I suggest you do, because I heard that um, they're going to stop producing these soon. So if you don't get one now, you probably won't be able to get one for another 5-10 years. Also, don't get the photo reconnaissance version, because it does not come with any cameras. It's just some decals for the cameras. Unless you want to make some, I would urge you get one of the other two boxings. And this one, I think, is the earliest boxing and will be the rarest soon. But, anyways, last kit. Um, last kit. This one was the biggest plane I got. And I was really looking forward to it. I was watching a video and I saw... I saw someone mention this set called All Over Spain, The Sky Is Clear. And it was a set which came with this SB2M and Spanish Civil War markings, as well as two Condor Legion... 109s and I thought the 109s were like E1s like the really early ones but no they were actually just E3s and so I decided I'm not going to spend £25 on two uh, two 109s and an SB2M but I still got this this is the cheapest one you can get at Hamlet's lowest oft and it's probably the most exciting I've never really built ICM I built a 1 to 70 second scale HG70 but I know they're becoming quite popular now in 1 to 48th, but I'm a 72nd scale guy. I'm not sure whether I like um, ICM or not. The problem with ICM is their detail is fine, but the con is it's almost too fine. Like, if you look, the rivets are so fine. It looks super realistic, like a shrunk down plane, but it also just looks ropey. That's how I've always looked at ICM kits detailed but ropey. And I, that's why I'm not sure I like ICM all that much. The kit comes with three schemes, though. And it's still a very exciting plane, and it's really the best SB2M you're going to get. Let me show you these schemes, because I think they're quite interesting. So you got the one on the box, which is like a normal SB2M. And then, after that... You've got another one, but it's like regular camouflage, and I thought, huh, that's kind of boring. But the difference is they've actually just got an open gunner all the time. 
And then you've got the later scheme in 1940, which is like a Condor Legion version. You know, it's got the little black roundel and things. Um, and that's by the other side. I had to buy some sand paint now because I've got to do the Breda 65 and the SB2M in that sort of colour. And I think it's pretty cool. I almost did get one other plane, and that was... Oh, yeah, it's another Spanish Civil War plane. It was, it was an HS-126, I think, reconnaissance. It was it was discounted, and it was pretty cool looking. But I'm excited for this one. I might do it next, or the Breda 65. Anyways, so that was my birthday haul. That's both haul videos out of the way. I should be doing unboxing videos on most of these kits at some point. That's why I didn't go too in-depth on some of these kits. But anyways, I hope to see you in the next video, and I'll see you all later.